Hydrogen has been called the fuel of the future for as long as I can remember, and for good reason. It's incredibly abundant and energy dense, but it's also a huge challenge to store and produce. That's why I was so excited by a company producing a solar hydrogen panel, producing hydrogen in your home. Charge your future hydrogen car to power your house later? Well, there's some challenges and some pretty innovative breakthroughs here. So let's talk about this today. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba DaVinci. This video is sponsored by Hoy Miles. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, and it's also the second most energy dense fuel behind nuclear power. Every kilogram of hydrogen contains 33.3 kilowatt hours of energy. That's 100 times better than Tesla's best batteries and 70 times greater than the current record holding battery from Amperis Technology. We could pack the same amount of energy in Tesla's Model Y, a 1700 pound battery pack, into just 15 pounds of hydrogen saving 1,685 pounds minus the weight of the storage system. But there's a catch. We can't find the hydrogen in nature because it's clingy and likes to stick to other elements like oxygen. So producing those 15 pounds of hydrogen requires putting in a lot of energy to pry it apart. Also being the smallest element and a gas, it has a very low energy density. At room temperatures and pressures, those 15 pounds I was talking about would occupy a volume of three thousand cubic feet. That's a cube 14 feet by 14 feet by 14 feet, roughly a very large room with high ceiling. This means that we need to compress it down to very high pressures or cool it down to below negative 253 degrees Celsius to liquefy the hydrogen gas or combine it with other elements again to make it fit in a smaller space. Finally, storing and moving this high pressure gas or cryogenic liquid around is very hard and expensive too. And requires costly equipment. This is in essence hydrogen's biggest problem, cost. The cost to produce it, the cost to compress it, store it, move it, and use it. This is why we don't see hydrogen lines coming from utilities feeding our homes. It's also why hydrogen cars haven't really made any headway against battery powered EVs. And that's exactly what a company from Belgium called Solhide is trying to solve. But before we get into that, let's talk about our sponsor this week, Hoy Miles. My solar system is finally approved and running, and I'm officially producing clean energy for our house and office. It feels so good knowing our crazy high energy bills are behind us. Hoy Miles makes some world-class microinverters, the part that takes DC from your solar panels and inverts it to AC for your house. Their hardware is top-notch, offers super high efficiency, and comes with an amazing warranty. But the magic that makes Hoy Miles so great is that you get all the benefits of panel-by-panel -panel production at an amazing price. With their two to one or four to one inverter, you can plug in two or four panels into one inverter and get all those microinverter benefits while paying a fraction of the cost. I'm always looking for ways to make solar more affordable for more people. And Hoy Miles is my go-to recommendation for inverters and why I have them installed in my house. So if you're an installer or a homeowner, you gotta check out Hoy Miles. You'll be glad you did. Links in the description. Huge thanks to Hoy Miles and you for supporting the show. So the first technology we're gonna talk about today is solar hydrogen panels, AKA Solhide. This is an all-in-one solar panel and water vapor electrolyzer that can produce hydrogen gas directly from water vapor in the air using only solar energy. This panel was developed by a group of researchers at KU Leuven in Belgium, led by Dr. Jean Ronge. The team founded a spinoff company called Solhide to commercialize the panels they've been working on since 2010. They made the headlines recently when they partnered with Comate, a Belgium hardware startup incubator, and announced that they could hit commercial scale as early as 2026. That's just a couple of years away. But I bet you're wondering, what makes this panel special? And how does it work? It's actually pretty simple. The hydrogen panel is made up of two parts. One, a standard PV panel on top that converts solar energy into electricity just like we've always done. And two, a very special type of electrolyzer that uses electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is released into the air and the hydrogen is collected in a series of tubes and it's piped into your house. So instead of having a series of wires coming out of the panels feeding an electrical panel, you'd have pipes running hydrogen gas. What could go wrong? Once we get to the hydrogen, we can put it through a fuel cell to generate electricity and we could, in principle, use it to fill up our hydrogen cars. I know what you're thinking. Hydrogen cars? Seriously? Yeah, seriously. There are many who consider hydrogen will be the energy source of the future, the Japanese included. If you don't believe me, you should check out our video that was wildly popular on Japan's red hydrogen plans, linked below. There's even talk about Tesla switching to hydrogen in 2024. Now, 
I'm just, I'm just kidding. That is a Elon Musk special April Fool's Day joke. But either way, hydrogen may be the only economical way to decarbonize many critical industries like steel and cement. Toyota is the world's biggest car manufacturer by volume, and they're also betting big on hydrogen with their development into the hydrogen combustion engine. So this isn't a fuel cell that takes hydrogen, produces electricity to power electric motors like the Mirai. This is a hydrogen combustion engine that would be like a direct replacement for gasoline. Interesting. We gotta do a whole video on that later. The only reason why we don't see hydrogen cars here in the States is that there simply aren't any hydrogen fueling stations anywhere outside of California and Hawaii. And even there, they're few and far between. But what if you didn't need a hydrogen pumping station? What if you could produce all the hydrogen you needed at home just as you could generate electricity and charge your EV today? I gotta ask, if you could refuel your car at home in under four minutes and get 300 to 400 miles of range, would you switch to a hydrogen car, even if there were no other pumping stations around? Sound off in the comments below. That's a tricky one because that would mean you need a second car for road trips and... Ah, complicated. So according to Sohide, the hydrogen panel is the size of an average PV panel and can produce around 250 liters of hydrogen on average per day for an overall efficiency of 15%. We'll get back to that in a minute. The key to their technology is their special electrolyzer, which doesn't use liquid water, but takes water vapor from the air. This is something called direct air electrolysis or DAE, and it works efficiently even in bone dry air with just 4% humidity. Only the driest deserts in the world would be too dry for DAE. Let's look at some of the other benefits of the Solhide panel. Solhide made a point of ensuring that their panels would be compatible with normal PV panels, and they'd fit on the same standard PV mounting and racking. This means you could just swap an old panel and replace it with a Solhide, or you could even retrofit your current panel with the electrolyzer. This got me thinking, what exactly then is the difference between getting a Solhide panel and just keeping a traditional solar panel and adding a third-party hydrogen electrolyzer? I'll get back to that in a second because it's actually pretty important and you'll want to stick around for my take on that. The second benefit is that this is an all-in-one green hydrogen generation system that'll start producing hydrogen the moment the sun hits the panel. This is a lot easier to install and more convenient than setting up separate panels and electrolyzers. So if you like all-in-one stuff like an iMac, you'll probably like this panel too. The average water electrolyzer has an efficiency of around 80%, while DAEs are much better at around 95% and more. This means that 95% of electricity generated by the solar panel on top gets converted into hydrogen on the bottom. That is a huge breakthrough and really interesting. But for all their benefits, Solhide panels are also pretty flawed. The most important problem I see with this panel is that it doesn't come with the hardware to A, convert hydrogen back into electricity, or B, store hydrogen when you're not using it. These are two major obstacles. You need a full cell, sorry, a fuel cell to convert the hydrogen back into water and electricity. This process only converts about 40% of the energy in hydrogen into electricity and the rest is released as heat. This is a horrible efficiency and it would make much more sense to use that electrical energy directly from the panel instead. However, if you use a heat pump in a well-insulated house, you can get that up to around 90% thanks to the coefficient of performance of heat pumps. But again, you probably would be just better off storing it in a battery. There are several ways you can store hydrogen, but none of them are perfect. The hydrogen produced is low pressure. So we have to either A, compress it and put it into a canister at 100 to 200 bars at ambient temperatures. This requires using a compressor, which in turn requires energy. And in typical cases, you can lose up to 20% of the energy just from compressing it. Or B, cool it down to hydrogen's boiling point to store it as a liquid. This is even worse since it eats up 30 to 40% of the energy you're storing. Additionally, liquid hydrogen tends to boil off. In a small system like the one you would have at your home, you can easily lose up to 15% of your stored hydrogen per day. Or C, store it chemically as ammonia, hydrocarbons, or as a metal hydride. This process requires complex catalysts and energy, both for storing and later using as hydrogen. Even though these cons come mostly from hydrogen itself and not from the panels, there is one technology I'll share with you in a minute that bypasses one of the worst parts of the system and that could really change the game. But before that, let's talk money. Solhide panels haven't hit the market yet and the company hasn't set a price point. It's pretty clear, however, that they must be more expensive than traditional panels since it's a normal panel and a DAE unit. But they did hint that the home panels will be available by 2030 and that they expect their cost to have every five years, just like normal solar panels have over the past few decades. And that by 2030, the Solhide panels would cost 
roughly what it costs for a panel today. That means that a Solhide panel would cost approximately 300 in 2030 after decreasing in price by 50% every five years. So do the numbers, Solhide panels today would cost roughly $800 each or almost three times as much as a normal panel. Putting the price for the electrolyzer alone at around $500. Assuming a 30 year lifespan and a production of 250 liters of hydrogen per day per panel, this brings the cost of generating green hydrogen at home to just $3.50 per kilogram in today's price. This is dirt cheap and a Solhide's main selling point. That is almost a fourth of the current cost of green hydrogen production at a large scale and almost half the cost of gray hydrogen produced from natural gas in Europe. But by 2030, the cost will be just $1.30 per kilogram if the projections are right. And this is even cheaper than gray hydrogen produced in the US from cheap fracked natural gas. There are several big ifs here and cost we didn't consider. But the fact that we can get even close to the same ballpark as the cheapest, dirtiest, large scale hydrogen production methods are pretty amazing, especially considering this could happen on your rooftop in a residential setting. This means the decentralization of green hydrogen generation, no more depending on large production plants and no more distribution issues. You could be producing hydrogen at a residential scale at home for use locally, no distribution required. But this still doesn't answer a key question though. Why go for a Solhide instead of a normal high quality solar panel connected to an electrolyzer? And I'll be honest, besides the convenience of having the entire generation unit in a single neat package, I have trouble answering this question. There are companies like the Australian Lavo that offer commercial hydrogen batteries designed to work with solar power. The key difference is that the unit generates and also stores hydrogen as metal hydride at room temperatures and pressure. Their commercial units store up to 40 kilowatt hours worth of hydrogen, and this has a round trip efficiency of 50%. This translates into a real world energy storage capacity of around 20 kilowatt hours after converting the hydrogen back into electricity. That said, 20 kilowatt hours is still about 50% more capacity than a Tesla Powerwall. Although the Powerwall is way more efficient, much higher, closer to maybe 85, 90% round trip, as opposed to their 50%, which is another problem with hydrogen. The Lavo costs around $23,000 or over twice as much as a Powerwall, however, but it does last 20,000 cycles. So if it does last the entire lifetime of it, it could potentially make sense because it does last longer than a Powerwall. I think for Solhide, to truly make sense, they have to partner with a company that does the storage and electricity production component like Lavo does. And if they can find the right partner and bring this together and truly make it a hands-off approach, this could work, especially as they reach economies of scale. Solhide's key advantage is their direct air electrolyzer, which works very efficiently with water vapor in the air. But its key disadvantage is that the produced hydrogen is really low pressure and low density and it's really hard to store. But there is another technology breakthrough that I wanted to leave for last. I'm talking about the high differential pressure electrolyzer. Now that's a mouthful, but it's actually pretty simple. It's a piece of equipment that can break down water into hydrogen and oxygen, but that produces the hydrogen at high pressure without any need for a compressor. This means we could store compressed hydrogen at home while the panel is generating electricity and pump it directly into our hydrogen car at home without any additional hardware which is awesome. Companies like Honda have been using this technology for a while now, and they built their first working solar hydrogen station all the way back in 2010. But with a little creativity, companies like Solhide could bring this technology to our homes at affordable prices in the near future, solving another one of hydrogen's greatest challenges, which is storage. In a nutshell, whenever we make these kinds of videos, it's for a simple reason. The future of energy storage will come down to two competing technologies. Do we go hydrogen or do we go batteries? And there's pros and cons to both, like all things in engineering. For example, hydrogen is just an abundant element in water vapor all around us right now, just a matter of collecting it. There's not as much mining required. Although with batteries, you need lithium, you need iron, you need nickel, you need cobalt potentially, although increasingly less so. But there is a mining component involved. But the battery's benefit is way more efficient, over 85% round trip efficiency compared to just 50% for the hydrogen. Also, there's other competing things like how you get the electricity back out. In the case of hydrogen, you need a fuel cell. Those are just less defined. There's been less research and development. So how long will they last? How finicky can they be? That's a big question. Whereas in the world of batteries, it's just an inverter. And we've been building inverters for a very long time. And these 
can easily last 10 or 20 years. So ultimately, that is the battle. And if you think that's crazy, you got to watch this video next on Japan's plans for red hydrogen production using nuclear power.